Welcome back to City Cation. This is Zan. Today we're going to be talking once more about BNGO. Now I'm very excited to bring you this due diligence. I brought it down to as a due diligence update and then technical analysis. If you want to skip to whichever you'll find it down in the description below and in the comment pinned. Now if you'd like to watch my previous DD that was very extensive, especially the last two, you can go ahead after this video. I'm going to give you everything about an update. I've been watching BNGO for a while and what I expect in terms of the price action. There's a lot of amazing things in this video so please stand by and Watch the entire video. Let's jump right into it. So before moving on, please make sure to subscribe, leave notifications on, and drop a like to this video because it really does help my channel. Even though you might think you're not making a difference, it does. I count every single subscribe. <laughs> Alright, BNGO here. If you haven't heard about this one, this one is massive. Sapphire product. This is a genome changing product. I did go through the brochure. I did go through the very much in detail about this product last time, but in very much short term, think about a machine that can basically do any kind of changes and analysis uh, for DNA um, and be able to change DNA, sequences, all that stuff for research purposes and genomes in general. And that is a life changing thing. It's a game changer, uh, especially for, for a lot of different things. And you'll find it down in the news in my last videos. I did go in depth on it. Their next event is happening on January 11th to January 15th of 2021, right around the corner. And basically it's going to start January 11th. Uh, going to go on to even bonus sessions for COVID-19 expert panel, solid tumors, complex molecular diagnostic heme, malignancy, constitutional cytogenetics. And I do think that this conference will be amazing. I'm going to be watching it as well and bringing you some of the highlights afterwards. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to get that as well. Now, the big thing about this Sapphire product, as I did say, basically they have above 95% sensitivity in balance and unbalanced translocation. And it goes up to 99% in inversions and homozygous insertions and deletions of genomes. You also have duplications and copy number of uh, variations. Now, uh, some of the things that recently happened was basically we got a little bit of a hint on an offering yesterday, last evening. So that started and then we basically did get as well them saying that they, they did have in terms of revenue between 3.8 million to 4.8, 4.2 million and the current cash as of the end of the year, it'll be uh, it's somewhere around 38 million to 39 million dollars. The amount is equivalent to basically exclude approximately 15 million dollar of additional cash received between January 1 and January 6th. So if we were to add these two together, let's say 39, 39 plus 15, we're looking somewhere about $54 million. Now, that is quite significant to my book, and I'll show you why. You're putting in 54. I did initially think that the, the offering price, offering uh, aggregate uh, income or sorry, profit will be $17 million. In fact, that is not the case. It will be approximately $88.5 million. So quickly on. Just if someone here is going to uh, make fun of my math, uh, just to make sure we're very accurate. We said 54 million plus uh, we're going back here, 88.5. So 88, we're looking at $142.5 million. And why is that very substantial? By the way, it's closing on January 12th. It's very substantial because if you go to the balance sheet and you go to their quarter balance sheet, you look into their uh, annual or sorry, total cash, well, previously it was only 18 million. You're going to come in with around 54 million into January 6th. And then adding on that 88.5 resulting in 142.5 million, your total debt will be smoked right out. Your total liability here is 26.7 million. Mark my word, they're going to come up with a PR saying they are debt free. That is going to happen soon. You're going to pay off some of that debt or I believe even more all of it. I mean, when you're sitting at 42. Point 142 million point five 26.7 that doesn't drop you back you're still above 110 million in terms of cash and that is a lot uh, now i know it's 142 here to go minus, minus 26 you're looking at 115 116 let's say expenses of offerings in itself it's probably going to be 110 million that's them debt free and that's the amount of cash they have in hand and if you go to annual that is a lot more cash than they ever had at the end of the year even in the last quarter and that is massive. That alone, in terms of a market cap right now, they have 720. After this one, it sets them at uh, a really good amount of cash on hand per market cap. Uh, 
especially if you were to go to their financials, it puts them in a better position. Uh, so if you go to financials here uh, and you go to their balance sheet in terms of the last quarter, their total current assets 29.2 million. You add around there, around let's say 110 million, you're looking at 130 million. So it definitely improves their statistics off price per book. Now, a big thing we're talking about this one is uh, their intrinsic value. So the price per book off 47 uh, times, that is a lot bigger than the 2 to 3 on SP500 and price over sales of 98. But we're very much talking about the intrinsic value and the game changer ability of this one. So moving on to quickly towards technical analysis, because I was a little bit critical on it last time and there's a bit of changes. If you haven't subscribed, please, please consider subscribing. And if you would like to join our Discord server, you'll find it in down below. It's basically a chat room. We talk during the day. We highlight the different volume stocks uh, and no pumping allowed. So it's going to be a safe environment there. But let's jump right into technical analysis. And I hope you're actually subscribed already. So on a one week perspective, things look still really bullish. MACD is flying up. Momentum very strong. ADX it's giving you a hint here about 50. That's where I start worrying. It still has a little bit of a leg up. So we're going to count ADX a little bit aside because I've seen stocks go up to 60 and not break. It's just a warning saying, hey, there is a pullback. And look at that today, uh, this week. We went from 724 to a low of four bucks. I think that's a decent pullback to count. William percent R is somewhere around neutral. It's not overbought as of this week. And that is a good thing. Now, one day things look it's a little bit mixed. ADX is approaching 60, but still showing a bullish movement. It, the moving averages are extremely bullish. 347, that's the 10 SMA, is above the 30 MA of 211. 111 is above the 68, that's the 50 SMA above the 200, uh, 200 SMA. Everything is pointing upwards, and that's amazing. The trading action zone where you can expect reversals is between 347 and 211. That's where you expect the majority of your reversals to happen. Now, the next thing here is William percent R. This one is sitting somewhere. Uh, Similar to what we've seen on the one week, it's not overbought, it's somewhere closer to neutral. My only concern is the MACD is trying to pull back. It's still somewhat stable, but still trying to pull back a little. Usually what I'm expecting is that it's not going to go negative in terms of the histogram, but it's going to attempt it and then get a rejection and move back forward. Now on a two hour perspective, things are looking insanely beautiful here. Moving averages were about to go bearish for the end of the day. And then it just did a 360 and then pushed back forward to make sure it stays bullish. And I like that. Now on the million percent R, yes, it's overbought in the extended hours. It jumped something like six, seven percent. And on the ADX, we're looking that there is now a potential of another new trend, a bullish trend forming and the MACD is starting to look bullish. A bit of technical items. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, there's a video, uh, a playlist that I made down below. It's a little bit outdated, but it has every single thing of the indicators I talk about. So in terms of the moving average band, it's way far, but they're moving up forward and it's expanding. So that is good. That's where we're going to take it at. But for the sake of the argument, 221 on the, on the top, 201 in the middle and 181 in the bottom. So we got that one. Uh, the next thing we're looking at is the stochastic fast and stochastic slow. So the stochastic fast and stochastic slow, what we're seeing here is that they are stabilizing. They're showing you it's more of an accumulation zone and it might be actually time to buy, but it's high. It's really high risk. Now, Fibonacci retracements and supports put this one as a support at 375. The next is 293. The next is 191. Significant resistances will actually currently a support is 458. Significant resistances are 575 and 724 on the Fibonacci retracements. Now, if we were to look into the last one month and let's say 30 minutes, we're able to determine significant supports and resistances on the current intraday or on the shorter terms. So 475 is a significant support here. Below there, a very important one at 436. Below there, we're looking at 401 and then 350 and then down to 298 and then down to 232 and then down to 201. Significant resistances here, and it looks like it's actually breaking it as we speak, is a 498. Above there, we're looking at uh, 516. And then above there, we're flying off to 564 if we break to 564 we have the six buck resistance above there 635 above there we're looking at 678 and if it does break that you have the 724 and then you're easily flying now it comes to the question to ed what do you think is going to happen with this one i'm trying to make this video short so if you would like to get a really in-depth about investment or investing in this one or the future of this one watch my previous two videos especially not the last one the one before that that's very important Honestly, in terms of this one, I do definitely think that we're back on track 
This thing is probably going to curve back up. It's probably going to see the 724. It's going to test it and it's going to shoot right back up. Investment wise, I definitely like this one. Sapphire is on my green books and it has been on a while. Even back when it was around 50, 50 cents, 70 cents, I still loved it. And just because right now it's a little bit above its price over book, it doesn't mean intrinsic value is uh, not going to catch up. And it doesn't mean that intrinsic, it doesn't have much of a push. And let me show you something. So we're looking at a price for book of 47 here and 98. Now let's think about the one of the companies that did really amazing this year. Let's take a look about Tesla here. What is their price per book? It's around 52.04 and price over sales is around 29.61. Let's take another look about NEO. NEO statistics, you're looking at, well, this price per book is actually not very accurate. We need to go to Finviz on this one because I've done that one before. Right here. And you'll see that their price over book is around 57.76, 48.12. So it really is looking like this massive stock market bubble kind of way. Uh, it's not far off from the valuation of Tesla and Neo, Neo by the price over books, etc. So that is something to consider. And I even think Tesla's actually price over book is a little bit higher than 50. Uh, oh, it's 51.43. So all I'm saying is that don't worry about the price over book. I think the intrinsic value of this one is massive and it's going to see a lot of big, massive future. What do you think about this one? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day.